Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F14B Tomcat and we're going to look at a cold start from the position of the Rio. And we're starting out here in the mission editor because there's an important option that we can change in the mission editor and it's this. It regards the INS alignment. It's INS reference alignment stored. We can have it ticked or unticked. Can one of uh, you guys explain what that means, please? Basically it just means that you are already starting with a partially aligned aircraft that already has that already had a heading alignment done in advance. In real life, they did actually do that to have aircraft that are more readily uh, available to scramble at any time. Well, oh, I see. And for the layman, this just means that it cuts down the time of the alignment procedure, yeah? Yeah, so basically the alignment was already done in advance and then it just shut it down again. It stores only the heading. You still have to enter the coordinates in where you are. And how it works is they put it on the catapult, they did the whole fine alignment, and then they powered it down. And the carrier was not allowed to change course ah. if it wanted to have a f an Alert 5 aircraft available. That is really interesting. God, the savior of GPS, guys. Imagine going through that all the time. <laughs> well, in theory, GPS only gives you the position as well and the alignment uh, so what an uh, alignment does it, it calculates your current heading by measuring the rotation of the earth and that's why the stored heading alignment is so much faster because you don't have to measure the entire earth's rotation to figure out what way your nose is pointing right uh, we're going to jump into the aircraft and go through the procedure now we've got Stral and Tebro to help us out because I'm not a Rio obviously so stand by Okay, we're in the cockpit now, so one thing to mention is that this procedure is going to deviate with whether we're starting on the airfield or whether we're starting on the carrier. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the airfield here and show it all the way through to the end, and then we are going to cut to a carrier at the point where it would differ from the airfield procedure and then show the difference there. Uh, note that we did not tick the uh, stored pre-alignment uh, button in the mission editor for this so first thing we're going to do uh, is we have not got a live uh, pilot here so i'm going to have to turn on the air from here so comms menu ground crew press power on Chief, turn on the ground power and we're going to ground crew ground power is now on. ground air supply connect okay ground air supply is now connected next we're going to take move, uh, bring the canopy down left control and c we're going to jar arm our ejection seat, don't forget that, whatever you do, ejection seat armed. Down to our left hip, we're going to turn our oxygen system on. At this point, Stahl is going to take over. Where are we going next, Stahl? Well, it's uh, next to the intercom system and set up a uh, cold mic or hot mic, depending on what you like best or what your SRS is set up if you're using that. Yeah, understood, so we're in cold mic here, that's fine. Also further to the front left, uh, your tack hand, you can turn it on to transmit receive, as well as your radio just to the front of that. Okay, so radio, mouse knob, right click once, transmit receive, done. Then all the way outwards you'll find a big silver switch, which is for your radar cooling, the liquid cooling. Uh, you want that usually forwards, unless you're, if you when you're carrying no phoenixes, you can just flip it back as well. Roger, so if I've got phoenixes, I want to have it in this forward position to call the phoenixes and the radar. If no phoenixes, then we can just call the radar, and then I'm going to have it back in this case. Afer? Then your CAP, which is the computer inward of your radio, uh, the main selected to nav for later. Nav. Roger. Front left on the dash, you can uncage your standby ADI. Standby ADI uncaged. Where your stick is, uh, the IR to V switch all the way forward, and the WCS switch uh, to the center to stand by. Oh, and it's important to point out at this point, if you're doing this on single player, uh, don't jump into the pilot seat, because Je when Jester takes over from when you leave the Rio seat, he'll start undoing what you've done, basically. Or if you do jump into the pilot seat, make sure you disable the gesture. It's something I worked out the hard way. Sorry, carry on. Next, uh, where your right knee is, you'll find your RLVR panel. You want to turn that on. And straight after that, you'll find your channel panel. You want to turn to stand. Roger. RWR on. DCEM standby. Outward of that, you'll find your data link panel, your data link frequency selector. Uh, you want to set whatever frequency you need, so usually that would be for your AWACS or if you're starting up from a carrier, for your carrier. And then flip the large silver switch at uh, the very outside forward, unless you just want to have data link within your flight, then it would be backward. Afer, well, um, I'm not going to hook up to a data link in this case, we will do on the carrier, but I'm just going to go to the forward position. 
Done. And that just leaves your countermeasure panel, set that up as you prefer, and then out from there you'll find your lights also set up as you Roger, okay, but we've got full videos on all of these uh, all of these guys, by the way, but I'm uh, going to go to countermeasures, my standard mode, manual, and I'm going to go to norm. Roger. Meanwhile, your TID should have uh, warmed up and be displaying something. You can switch the master mode select on the top left to ground alignment and bring up your knee board. Ground alignment, so she said at this point, because we're starting off from an airfield, that's why it's ground alignment. Okay, I'm now going to bring up my knee board and it's right to control and shift and I've got my current position in lat long here, <laughs> elevation and magnetic variation. You mean right shift and K? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, Alright, so, you know, you see your, your own coordinates, your altitude as well as your magnetic variation, and you're going to punch it into the CEP, which is the computer on your left side. Uh, important to note, before you input anything into this computer, uh, always clear the, the memory. So you start by pressing clear, then you press the lat button, and you give it the plus. Then you start punching in the coordinates for the northing. Stand by. Four. Three, two, six, five, and I would like to have a little check just to make sure she's gone in okay. At the top of the TID, we've got uh, an all thing four, three, two, six, five, and then enter. Okay. Uh, then you press clear again, uh, you press your longitude button, you give it the plus again, and then you start punching in the east. Confirm. Three, nine. Five, 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 check. Three, nine, five, 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 and enter. Once you've done that, we'll press clear once again. We'll press alt, give it a plus, and punch in the altitude in feet. Hey, firm. I can't see how I'm having a sp. Oh, got it. Alt <coughs> plus one zero four. Check. Yep. And Enter. finally, we're going to go to the board underneath and we're going to press on the button that reads Magvar Heading. As soon as that's lit up, we can press clear again, press Heading, give it a plus, and punch in your magnetic radiation, which we currently is 6.4, and enter. Six, yeah, so 6.4, not 6.4. 6. 6.4. Check. Yep, enter. Okay, that's typed in. Now you can get rid of your kneeboard again and just wait for this thing to align. Roger. So, can you explain the symbology of the alignment, please? Uh, we've got a number on the left, we've got ticks along the right, and we've got a chevron moving along. So the chevron um, basically shows you how, long, how far along your alignment is. When it's on the first line, that's a finished heading alignment, which is the minimum alignment you need to fire up phoenixes. If you let it go to the second vertical line, that'll be a rough alignment. Alignment and when it's all the way over to the right and turns into a diamond with a dot inside, you're fully aligned. And then we're good to go, Roger. Usually, so if we weren't scrambling, presumably that's what we'd wait for, and then I'd give the pilot the go ahead to go. Yeah. Right, so just to confirm, this number here is the time since we started in tenths of minutes. So each digit here from four to five is a tenth of a minute, six seconds. Is that right, guys? Did I understand yeah. that right? Why is it like that's just the oddest thing ever, isn't it? Yep. This plenty is odd. <laughs> right, anyway, I'm going to continue. So, so we're past this uh, tick here, so we're now a chevron. Let's carry on. And we've reached the end, so we've got a dot. It's 70. We've got a, uh, a diamond with a dot, so that's the procedure done, yeah? Yep. Now, out of interest, we've got a barometer altimeter here. If I press and hold the reset here with right click, then you can see that the flag disappears, and we are good to go. Right, um, anything else you want to add to that before we go to the carrier variation, gents? Yeah, once we're done aligning, you should flip it to INS nav mode. Oh, uh, sorry, yeah, right, so this is uh, how we actually fly the plane in INS nav mode, yep, and that's our standard display. Right, so that is the procedure on the ground. Next, obviously, the pilot would have normally be doing his engine starts and whatnot, but uh, there's no one in there at the moment, so next we're going to go show the variation from the carrier. Okay, welcome back. So, this time we're going to start on the carrier. We're going to cold start F14. Going to click on that there. And what we're going to do this time is our INS reference alignment stored so we can see see the difference. So, we can tick that on, save that up, and then we go. Okay, we're on the carrier now. Sorry about all the noise. So, what I'm going to do, first of all, is get in the Rio C. 
I'm going to go through the same procedure very quickly. Stand by. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through the procedure that we did on the airfield until it starts to differ. At that point, I'll cut back and we can see the difference. Okay, I've duplicated my procedure to the point where we're going to look at turning the data link on. So the data link style. We want to hook up to the carrier, yeah. right? Exactly. So you want to uh, bring up a new board again with uh, right shift and K. And you go to the third page. Uh, but now it's actually fixed and it won't crash your game anymore. I've got the Senis. I've got his data link megahertz here. Exactly, so you input that into your data link frequency. Uh, be advised that it always starts with a 3 by default. You don't get a selector for that, it's just written there in white on the left. Okay, okay so that's 318.5, outer knob to the upper position because we're contacting to a carrier. That's fine. And then important, uh, after that you'll find another switch. This is mode, Keynes waypoint. You want to switch it forward to Keynes. AFM. And then you go to your TAD master mode or your nav mode and you switch it to align CVA. So this is the alignment for the carrier. Yes. Right, so my understanding at this point, chaps, is that because we've stored the uh, heading, the, the option in the mission editor, we've got this ASH here that we've got the stored heading, which is going to save us several minutes. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, this works also on the ground, by the way. And also, we don't need to type in our long lat like we did on the ground because that's being fed through the data link from the carrier. Is that right? Yep. Okay, so we're waiting for it to align now. We think this should take less time, about two minutes, we think. Yeah, two to three minutes. Carrier is usually a little bit longer always than ground because the because you're moving. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> I just fast forwarded it for just a, just a couple of seconds and it's already done. So that's done there. Right, so that's us aligned on a carrier with the pre-stored heading, heading alignment done. Anything else you want to mention about the cold start for the Rio and the F-14B, guys? No, not really. I mean, if you feel like it, you can also, you know, start setting up weapons and the like, but that's going to be specific to your current mission. There's one thing that Jester does. This is actually quite important. When you have Jester and when you have a human Rio, there's one difference. If in the mission editor you set the waypoints, basically waypoint 1, 2 and 3 for example. They are not set in the plane, Jester sets them uh, during cold start mm. and a human Rio has to do the same and the waypoints set in the mission editor are found on page 4 on the kneeboard. Right, yeah I haven't set any waypoints up but if I did they would be in there and I would have to go in and type them into the system, yeah? Yes. That's fine, we'll go through that on the navigation video but that's good, I'm glad you told Oops. me that. One more thing actually that might still be worth mentioning, if you do jump in the back uh, of someone else uh, sometimes there's a little bit of a desync issue with the cooling of the radar um, so you'll notice when it says org 9 cond on your uh, warning light panel you can look at that by just quickly switching off the cooling on the, on the left side yeah. to, the, to the center position Understood. And then check to the right of your TID, you'll, you'll get that little, little warning, you'll just have to recycle that sometimes and then it'll work Roger. Right, okay, so it's a more complicated procedure than we're used to, but it's a damn complicated plane. So, I hope that helps. Go do some cold starts, and we'll see you later.